Hi, I'm Paul. I'm Martin. And welcome back to the Goalkeeping Podcast. So, got a nice little topic for today. Mm. Here we are in the middle of the summer. What do I do as a pro or as an amateur, as a keeper, off season? Maybe, maybe we start. Let's go back. What, what did, what, what did I, what did I used to? Because my guess is it's changed massively. Yeah, the difference from now to then is. So the 1980s, my off season yeah. comes. What is that? A load of curry and beer and uh, yeah. put a load of weight on. Or? Well, I'd have been two or three at that point, so I wouldn't have been having that yet. Yeah. But um, probably more in the ninth night, even the 80s and 90s, I would have said was similar. Not too far off. Um, yeah, the, the the the. I mean, what used to happen is the guys used to finish, and a lot of them used to go away together. And it's straight away, they're in, they're drinking, they're relaxing. Um, some guys would put like a stone and a half on, a stone, stone and a half. Um, you know, and, and the challenge is to some of them to eat what they could, eat what I can. You know, <laughs> you can come back the fattest. Everything. Yeah, completely. You know, how much weight, you know, the, the one that can put the most weight on wins. Um, but no, they just used to, it was just a case of, look, I've spent you know, 10, nine and a half, 10 months, um, you know, really grafting and really being disciplined. And it's time that I just, re- you know, just chill out for a bit and enjoy the not so healthy foods and the not so healthy drinks. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, as time slowly gone on, obviously it's, <laughs> it's, it's worlds apart from where it was worlds apart. And we'll explore that, but what's mm. driven, is it the clubs that have driven the changes? Is it the players? Is yeah. it a combination yeah. of, the game's more professional now. Mm. What's that? Well, I think if you go back to when, for example, Arsene Wenger came over, you know, you hear the stories of, you know, how they, how he tried to sort all the food out and the drink out and he used to sort out the times of training sessions and, and before it was just sort of, well, if we train four hours, surely that's better, you know. Um, you know, so I think sports science slowly started to come into play and um, things became a lot more measurable you know, heart rate monitors and, you know, there was a, there was evidence to what was going on. My first day at Tottenham doing my scholarship, we, we run around Epping Forest for about three and a half hours. Yeah. You know, and you look back now, you know, I'm a little bit more educated now and think, well, I don't know, was that, was that really beneficial? Was that maximizing? But it may have been more the case of a, of a mindset thing. Um, but everything seems to be measured now, you know, absolutely everything. So, um, I think that did change when a few sort of foreign managers came into the country and, um, you know, just used their, what their, their philosophies were in, in, you know, back at home. So, um, but no, the, the food was a biggest, was a, as a major, I found them one of the major changes um, along with, you know, along, along with the drink. So. so if I now then, end of season, mm. end of May, I guess, depends if you're involved in the playoffs or not, but let's, let's say end of May. Yeah. I guess there's two things. One is, did the off season used to be longer? I.e., yeah, you came back a lot later. Be, maybe. Yeah, it did seem to always be a lot longer. You know, I mean, it seems it now. I mean, you know, we 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 you got clubs going back now, second, third week of June. Yeah. So if you're involved in the playoff in May, yeah. If you're lucky, you've maybe had three weeks off. Yeah. In the nineties probably the last game of the season then was probably FA Cup final. Yeah. You maybe had June, July, maybe even half of August, do you think? No, certainly June. Yeah. Is, you'd have had eight weeks, wouldn't you, before the old first division started yeah. for the second week of August, probably? Yeah. I think I think the major problem with that was the TV rights. You know, when, when obviously years and years ago, there wasn't as many, you know, there wasn't, the, the financial rewards weren't as big as they are now. Um, because there's so many more competitions, because and, and there's so much more rewards if you do win these competitions. Yeah, they just got to get back and, and get prepared. Uh, you know, a lot lot quicker. Um, and the season, the off season, is a lot shorter because there's more. You know, there's more games. Um, you know, more you st- games in season. But I guess also, hmm. I mean, how many clubs tour during the off season? Yeah, you know, I thing, guess yeah. you're coming back early. Yeah, because we're flying off to Singapore next week to play in a mini tournament with yeah. whoever. Yeah, Which I guess again, it's that gig, isn't it? Financial rewards to the club and the sponsorship deals that they've got is kind of a, we have to go to, you know, um, we have to go to an America or a Singapore or a China or, you know, to entertain the supporters that they've got out there yeah. uh, and, and obviously the sponsors. So, 
yeah, that's a, a potentially another week that they that you know they have to add into into that preseason schedule. So, um, but there there is a lot more games. There is a hell of a lot more games. Um, you know, some teams are hitting sixty odd games a season. You know, sixty sixty five games. You stay in competitions. It's it's crazy how many games you can play. Which then, so the counter argument would be, back in the day, let's say, mm. at least you had time to recover. Your body had a chance to recover. Yeah. You had those six, eight weeks, whatever it was, yeah. reset the batteries, restart, et cetera, et cetera. Now, mm. we're almost saying it's 12 months a year. If you're lucky, there's a two, three-week break. Because yeah. even if you have a, a middle of the season, look, guys, we haven't, it's an international week, so we're going away to Dubai for four or five days. It's not really a break, is it? It's not off-season. It's just no. we're going to go and do some lighter training in the, in, in the sun, yeah. I guess. I think, it, yeah, yes, I agree. But I also think it depends on what manager you've got. You know, if you've got a manager that's a little bit more of an old school mentality, for example, I mean, going away to Scotland with um, Felix McGat with Fulham, the boys were up at sort of half six running on the beach. Yeah. And that wasn't the training session. That was the a mentality of we're going to graft this year and you're going to get up and this is the bare minimum of what I'm going to ask you to do. Um you know, we're coming back and then all of a sudden we're having breakfast and then we're, you know, starting to prepare for the first training session of the day. Um, they go and do an hour and a half, two hours of football training along with the fit- fitness training for pre-season, even though they've already done a run on the beach, to then have a couple of hours break after that session and then go again in the afternoon. You know, if you've got a little bit more of sports science now, uh, which there is, and you've got a manager that supports that, they may realise that, you know, two hours, for example, of training for that day is maximising it and, and that's more than what the, the, the team need. Um, so it all depends. The, the, the trips can be very, very... They could be outstanding, the trips, the pre-season trips. But it all depends who you've, who you've got as <laughs> the manager yeah. of, and taking who's controlling that group. So, um, so yeah, it does vary. But, but yeah, the idea is, uh, of going away is... And what, what, how that kind of normally looks is, you know, the, the players will have a, a couple of training sessions a day. There'll be a lot of fitness-based work. Obviously, there'll be a lot of ball work. I think that the time from the 80s and 90s where pre-season looked very much without footballs, I think managers are very clever now where they are running, but a lot of the players don't realise they're running because there's a round object at their feet. Yeah. Psychologically, it's, it's so powerful. Um yeah, and there's a lot more. I think there's a lot more gym-based work as well, and and, and pre- uh, preparation before the gym-based stuff, which a lot of it's sort of called pre-activation work, you know, and core work, and it's 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 really really technical now. I would say that. Is there anything specific mm. during the off season at any level? Yeah, that a keeper can do, should do, mm. that maybe is different to an outfield player or is there something what what can I do I'm you know I'm I'm Sunday league footballer um I may be unfortunately in the 90s so I've had my my season's finished in May so maybe as an amateur footballer yeah. we're still in that mindset hey I'm going to enjoy the summer going to go away with my mates whatever whatever mm. I probably will put some weight on I probably will drink too much because I'm not a, I'm not paid to be a pro footballer yeah but even at that level what can I do what should I do just to mean yeah. that I'm not coming back and it's taking me three months to get back on my game. Well, funny enough, I, d- I delivered a classroom workshop on this at the weekend on a camp and we, I got the guys to make a list of things that they feel they shouldn't be doing or is not necessary to do. So lots of people assume that, you know, running hours on end is a fantastic thing. Well, I, I don't see that relating to goalkeeping at all. You know, okay, if you're if you're putting weight on these, do some fat burning runs. You know, they're sort of medium range to, then okay, you, you you're trying to lose that, but people assume that you just got to you just got to run all the time. Yeah. You know, and I would that would be on my list of maybe things that I don't need to do, things that I would uh, and I'd encourage to do is just try and mix it up as much as you can. You know, you see, Ben Foster jumps on a bike. He loves the bike. Jump on a bike. Then you may do some skipping work. Then you may do some yoga. Then you may add a couple of little short runs in there. You know, goalkeeping is about, um, you know, short, sharp bursts. So I'm a bit, uh, I'm, I don't know what comes, what has come to mind, but I remember being at Charlton and um, uh, Jason Brown, goalkeeper, played for Wales as well, played for Blackburn, had a really good career. I always remember being in the gym and he'd, 
you know, he'd load the bar up and he's jumping as high as he can with it. And I, I've never, I've not witnessed that before. Yeah. Um, I'm like, Jason, what are you doing? And because I was young then and it's like, it's all like really explosive power work. And look, you know, looking back, you're like, that's phenomenal. You know, he, 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 you know, to to really maximise his his strength and his, uh, you know, explosive takeoff, and um, he was really going for it. And um, I learnt lots from that because it is about short, sharp bursts with stuff. So, so for me, the swimming, you know, and that don't mean lie low, you know, cocktail. <laughs> well, if you're coaching, you can have a bit does, of that, can't you? Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. If you're coaching, it means a lie low, yeah, of and a cocktail. Yeah, of course. If you're playing, it means you know, on the site, you know, actually going for it. Yeah. Um, and again, it doesn't need to be three and a half hours of swimming. You know, you may do five lengths and have a 30-second break. You know, lots of interval stuff for me with goalies is, is good. But just to mix it up, same golf. Go and play golf in the summer. So it's not really, it's not the time to be working on technique or reactions or anything like that. It's more the time to just keep your mm. fitness at a yeah. level in what do whatever you enjoy doing to keep that yeah level. if you've got four, look if you've got four weeks off if you know because the break seems to be getting shorter and shorter if you've got four weeks off my high my recommendation would be for a week do absolutely nothing like right. go and do whatever you want to do just really relax switch off um for me switching off looks like sitting on the beach and just you know staring in the sky, reading a book, and just trying to think about absolutely yeah. nothing and just completely switch you, you've off. You've just done that for a couple of weeks. I have done that for two weeks, yeah. and I'm trying to do it again for another two right, weeks. Right, okay, so you're trying to, yeah, so you're um, playing the coach role here rather than the yeah, player role. but I think you've got, a, I was reading Peter Schmarker's book actually on holiday. Um, I'm a terrible reader. It's taken me three months to read it. Um, yeah, you but, did mention this in a podcast about yeah. three months ago. So good, yeah, glad, so glad to see that, you wake, that yeah. you're making your way through it anyway. Yeah, and he was saying like he there was times where he would, he'd finish the season and then because he was away of international duty, he'd, ha he'd obviously represented Denmark then. And then before you know it, he's got a week and a half till he's back for the new season. Um, and he was saying about how he needed just to go away from everything and everyone and just switch off. And just let his body just completely recover, um, and I think that's a the, the recovery for me is just as important as right. Let's get going again. You know, you've got to switch off. Yeah. Um, you know, I know. You know, when footballers are, I know so many footballers that when the season's on, they absolutely adore the sport. The minute the season finishes, don't show me a football and just don't talk about football. You know, I know so many that won't watch football in that season because yeah. they just want to switch off from it. Um, so I think that's really important. You know, if it's four weeks, first week, just really completely switch off. Um, you know, the second week, just slowly start doing some bits again. You know, maybe a couple of light jogs, a little bit of swimming, a few light weights. You know, and then for me, that third week will be maybe start getting hold of the ball again. You know, start getting hold of the ball and start handling the ball a little bit. And then that fourth week, yeah, you might start getting to, you know, a, a coach or it doesn't have to be a coach. That's the joy of pre-season. I've seen some top international players and you'll see them on their social media. They go to the local park, and they're just throwing ladders down, yeah. and throwing clothes down. And you're like, this is class. This Change is what the scenery, see. something different. Yeah, yeah, too right. There's not an eight million pound, you know, complex, and there's golf buggies everywhere. No, 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 they've bought a ladder, you know, and they've put it down, and there's probably had to clear a little bit of dog poo up and whatever, you know, back to yeah. right rawness. And you think, yeah, kids should be, you know, kids should see that, you know, the international players doing that. So um, that's Camp, our summer plan. camps, would you recommend? Camps, obviously, you run camps. We yeah. we launched the nationals, yeah, um, which is going to be happening in in August. So, mm. uh, you and I are big fans of camps. Yeah. At the right time, you're working on technique. You are working yeah. on other elements of the game mm. in a in a period of that in that off season period. Yeah. yeah, I would. All I would recommend though, if you are going to do a camp, make sure you physically start to prepare yourself before that. So, you know, if you've had two weeks off and then the camp's coming up, um, I would highly suggest, you know, two, three, four days of just slowly getting back into, you know, the physical aspect of it to then start the camp rather than doing nothing and then joining the camp. Yeah. You know, the odds are you could be picking up little injuries and little, you know, pulled hamstrings and all that. So as long as you get yourself back moving again, I would, you know, yeah, like this weekend, we've got the, you know, the non-league camp coming up. We've got Lola, non, you know, non-league goalies come. Um what are we doing that? Same. We do lots of physical stuff, but just as important, and I see this now as we get them in the classroom, and we'll talk about how they deal with mistakes and how there was anxiety and things like that, you know, career pathways. I think that's something you can do off-season as well. Yeah. You know? Looking think about it. Reset, reset your goals. 
think yeah. about what, what you yeah. want to achieve next season. Because mm. I think I don't think players now or goalkeepers now look enough at the mental side of the game of how they've dealt with that throughout the season. You know, they may have had someone in the family be really ill and then, you know, saying, I don't know, September, a family member's gone down really ill. Look at your performance. It sounds mad, but look at your performance around that time. You know, did you find that your performance dropped? Did you find it didn't come from any crosses? Did you find that you was listening to more of the crowd, you know, dig you out? You know, I'd look at all of that through the whole season. I think that's a great takeaway because, again, we always look at the that, that kind of a, uh, syn- synergy between business, kind of my yeah. world, and, 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 and football. Mm. So for me, I think that's that same thing. It's that end of financial year. Let's have a look back. Yeah. What, are, what what worked? What didn't work? Mm. What are we going to do next year? I love that from a from a keeper's point of view because again, nobody he, nobody talks about that in a previous no. pro, pro, podcast. Probably Rob Blackburn would have said yeah. with his uh, performance mindset. That's a great exercise to do. Yeah. So okay, the obvious ones are what we've said: running, keeping yourself ticking over, cycling, swimming, whatever. Mm. Mentally, love that. Yeah. Actually thinking about. What I, what I want to achieve next season is a great take. Even away. things like when you when you turn up to a game, how did you react when you turn up to that game late? How did you react when you turn up to that game silly early? Yeah, because we've all at some point got to the game. Tony Roberts at Dagenham used to be there like three and a half hours before kickoff, you know, and he just said, "I have to be here. I just have to be here." Yeah, you're like, but turn up so early before the game, um, but it worked for him and. Uh, I just think you gotta. You, uh, I just think you can get the extra edge over others by looking into that real detail of, you know, it's not just physical. We we all know that now, especially after the Rob Blackburn podcast. You know, it's not just the physical aspects of it. Yeah. It's so much about how you dealt with stuff. You know, when you played in the FA Cup and you played a team that was higher up, how did you deal with the crowd? What did you notice about yourself? Was it that you just, you know, you kept looking behind and you was worried that someone was digging you out, or um, how did you deal with the manager? You know, giving you a real good bollocking. You know, what was you saying in your head? Was you crumbling? Was you going, yeah, I really like this. I listened to a podcast the other day and there was a player on there saying he loved managers picking him out. Loved it. Because he went, no, nah, that's fine. I that's respect you. Him. But I tell you what, I'm going to prove you wrong next week. Yeah. You know, but then another player might go, oh no, I'm, you know, they crumble. Um, so I would, yeah, that the, the mental side of the game is probably the side I would look at in the first week when you are just trying to just chill out. That's yeah. probably for time to go... Okay, well, I'm staring at the sun and probably a few other people around walking in and around the beach, which you may do. Um, might be a time just to, you know, just to just think back on how I dealt with stuff. Okay. So that's off-season, pre-season. Real quick one. Mm. I mean, you, you touched on this about Schmeichel and international and trying to trying to take some time for yourself. I'm intrigued. This year, it's World Cup year. There's going to be a break. Yeah. Uh, premiership and championship break, which I think is about six weeks. Yeah. break from around about I think it's 10th of 9th 10th of November through to I think the next game back is Boxing Day mm. what what are the players that aren't in the World Cup aren't involved in the World Cup what do they do what are the clubs going to do what's that process because mm. that's almost like a, a summer break yeah. in terms of time mm. how do you know how are those players going to maintain their level yeah. of fitness and more importantly those that are at the World Cup that come back they've had no break yeah I think I think the ones that are not going to the World Cup um, mentally I think that's going to be tough for some of them that were close to being selected so yeah. it's going to be a tough period for them um, I think I think the manager and the clubs will sit down and work out what's going to be best for most in, most of the players individually so the ones that have just missed out you know, what do you do with them? You know, because they're not going to be happy. They're, they're, they're going to be struggling, knowing that they should be there now. Um, they can't, they can't, you know, vent their anger out in another game because there is no games. Um, so it may be that, you know, that that first bit, do they give them a short period of time where they go, right, go away with the families? I think they will do that. Um, but then I think there'll be a lot of in-house stuff as well. You know, remember at the clubs, you've got under 18s, under 21s or 23s, sorry. Yeah. You know, I think there'll be some in-house games. Um, I even think there'll be games organised within clubs as well. Um, you know, one team playing another team, you know, again, behind closed doors. I think you'll see a few of the stadiums with a few games going on, that which which most people won't know about because obviously it'll be behind closed doors. But they'll have to keep them going. 
Um, but it's an advantage to clubs as well because the injuries that you may have at that time, you know, it gives them an opportunity to go, right, we got six weeks now. Yeah. Let's really go to town and get as many of these players back as we can. And then the minute we start the season again. So it could go, it could go in uh, favour for a lot of clubs. But I think they will set the guys a programme. Um, they will give them a bit of time off because it is quite a long... I think it was only if it was only a couple of weeks, I think they might get a couple of days off, but then they'll stick to the programme at the club. Being it's such a long time, um, I'm not a lover of it. I'd, 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 I'm going to hate that this time of the season it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, the build-up to Christmas, as we all know, especially with the Premier League, is massive. You know, it's huge. Um, and then the games coming in, building up to Christmas, and then during the Christmas period, a, a massive hit. They always have been. So, but that boxing game day is going to be huge. I'll be isn't huge. It? I imagine every ground's going everyone's going to want to come back. Yeah. You haven't seen yeah. your team play for six weeks. You're yeah. going to be one. You're going to want to be in yeah. that crowd, aren't you? So, the massive advantage though for the World Cup going at that time is that the you know your lower league, your non-league, you know, it'd be lovely to see people that go to Premier League sides. Go and watch your non-league side. side. Go yeah. and watch your league two sides. Go and watch your league one sides. You know. Because there's just as much you know on offer than there is there at the Premier League. You know there is. Yeah. It's it, it's a different vibe and it's a different you know entertainment show. But there's a lot. You know there is a lot there. Yeah. So um, that'd be a big advantage to the the lower clubs. Brilliant. Okay. So listen, if you're listening to this podcast or watching us, um, and it's the middle of the summer, and uh, maybe you've had a few beers, a few kebabs, whatever. Um, I think the clear message is. It's just keep keep ticking over mentally, physically. Keep ticking over because it's a lot easier to get back into playing um, when you've maintained some level, as opposed to that level completely dropping and then trying to get back to a higher level. That's a that's a that's a tough ask for anybody. So, hopefully, you've had some takeaways from that. Uh, I've been Paul Sherratt. Martin Brennan. That was the goalkeeping podcast. I hope you've enjoyed the content. If you'd like to become a better goalkeeper, then check out developinggoalkeeping.com where you'll find podcasts, tips, videos and more.